All right, it's time to unbox the curriculum. I just got it today in the mail. We're gonna do Good and the Beautiful, level three. We have done so far Good and the Beautiful K, Good and the Beautiful one, Good and the Beautiful two, and Good and the Beautiful three. And if you watched my mid-year change video back in, I believe, January, I had switched to doing my own eclectic DIY math that I posted for free, excuse me, DIY. And you know what? That really helped my son when he was going through a time where he was giving me the signal that Good and the Beautiful at that time was not you know, working for him. It was making math a struggle for him. But I don't think the problem was necessarily the curriculum, but just remembering that we're teaching the child math curriculum. So if at a particular time, you just know that you need to make a change and you feel confident about it, it's okay to make that change and then find out, hey, guess what? Then we switched right back and I gave him the mid-year math test and I was like, hey, great. That shows that what I had created for him was working and he was now confident and did really well on that test and you know, just was ready to get back on track with it. The ways he was feeling overwhelmed about it kind of changed. I do see um, here and there a little bit of that feel. He'll get overwhelmed by something, but, but it's a small level to where you can just kind of move right through. That is, you know, just something to share with you because maybe you've gone through that. But we're going to do Good and the Beautiful again this year because, you know, you pour over and pour over math curriculums. There's so many options and you want to make sure you have the best one or the right fit for your child. And I feel like Good and the Beautiful is still doing the job for us. I think it teaches it well. I think they've done a good job of condensing the curriculum down and not making it too uh, many pages. I'd like, it, of course, because, again, my son is end of the year first grader right now going into second grade and so this past year we were doing even though he was a first grader we were doing the level two and so that's why I think we did hit that point where I slowed down because he had started the level K as a preschooler second semester preschooler and you know went through that pretty quickly because we had done a lot of math related hands-on games when he was little and so by the time he was in kindergarten we did a few more weeks of K and he went right into the level one and so I think it was just that point where we got to a little spot where we needed to slow down and that's what we did. And here we are back with Good and the Beautiful. So we might start off the year in level two um, as a second grader, but um, he'll surely finish that up pretty quickly. He'll probably do some lessons over the summer a little bit, maybe once a week or so, or a little bit to kind of keep him fresh too. And so I feel like we'll probably start the Good and the Beautiful level three, you know, within the first quarter, we'll see. Again, because he started early, I'm not in a big rush. I don't think we should be anyway, even if our kid's not, right? It's, you know, just a number. It's, you know, grade level is just a number. So, anyway, without further ado, let's open up our curriculum. It has this nice bubble wrap. We gotta pop it for fun. Let me hear it pop. Oh, no, it's not the fun kind of pop. So well, that's okay. My baby's sleeping in the other room. Excuse me, she's actually almost two. Not really a baby, but... Okay, we got some fun foam. Let's see, what do we have? I think this is the, oh, it's the math box. So pretty. I do like that it's pretty, but that is not a number one priority. Um, but I do like that. And let's see, how do you even open this puppy? Oh, not sure. Oh, it's a nice slide. Okay, and it comes with this fun dry erase calendar and an array board, which is for multiple. Really exciting. The third grade, they'll be touching on multiplication and division. We have our pattern blocks. It comes with this handy dandy measuring tape. Some pawns, which I have so many of, but it's nice that it just comes anyway. And some fun dice. And that's it for the math kit. And then we got another lovely hunk of bubble wrap to fill the planner with plastic. No, it's okay. I will recycle that. And a dry erase board. And I did buy the kit, even though I probably could have put it together. I have a lot of different things, but it's just, I don't know. I felt like it was a good deal. I'm just going to get it. But I did have a dry erase board and some of these things now that I'm thinking about it. And here's the book. Ooh, nice and thick. All right, so I'm going to switch the camera to where you can look at it a little bit better. Okay, here we have Good and the Beautiful, of course, book three. 
some nice pictures of Asian children and bamboo. Okay, so the first thing I like to look at is what it covers, and that's probably gonna help you a lot, just seeing that page, right? We wanna see a big picture. So here's our table of contents. Let me see if I can get a good shot of that for you. All right. So numbers through 10,000s edition with regrouping review. I'm going to go ahead and just let you pause that if you want to read through that. Um, and then I might go ahead and give you some impressions I have. You know, what stands out to me is that they are getting into multiplication pretty much right away. Um, you know, numbers through 10,000s is going to be, I guess, by the time he's done with the level two, it will have been a review concept or we'll continue that. Addition with regrouping, I know that was a big thing in the level two, and rounding, he's got that down pretty good. So, yep, and multiplication seems to be a big focus, and writing numbers into the hundred thousands. That's good that they're doing elapsed time more. They did some of that in the level two. Yep, and then I like how they're transitioning from just rounding to rounding money which I think will be a pretty easy transi transition. Now we're getting into fractions. And definitely, um, you know, measurement was just lightly touched on with, you know, yards and, you know, feet and inches and centimeters and millimeters and meters. And, you know, now we're getting into volume and capacity with liquid measure. And that's maybe a little harder. You know, obviously, they wait till level three to get into that. And that'll be kind of exciting. Um metric length conversions using a thermometer all right yeah all right so let's look at the next page it's a lot still a lot of multiplication and division seems to be the big focus is multiplication and division obviously it's still place value and you know regrouping and things but i think they expect by this point there it looks like they want them to have already had that down pretty good all right they got some nice reference sheets for the students in the beginning to help them remember metric conversions, customary conversions, formulas, temperature. It's definitely a big jump. You know, third grade is now considered intermediate, third, fourth, and fifth. And kindergarten, first, and second is considered primary. Oh, it just seems that they're giving them a little chart like that. Kind of says a lot, you know, in the, the multiplication division. You got this chart here. They want them to master uh, certain multiplication tables. I, I, what stood out to me is that and I looked at sample pages online so I can say this without much uh, looking is that, you know, when I had uh, taught um, one of my, my years at third grade, I remember we had the students master each set of multiplication in order, you know, like your ones, your twos, your threes, and so on. And I think it's kind of good that maybe that's not always necessary. You know, some of the ones that are easier, like the ones, twos, threes, you might not really need to memorize those because they can do repeated addition and just kind of quickly figure those out. So knowing maybe just the harder ones by memory saves time and maybe kind of does the job. So I think that's kind of a pretty efficient approach there maybe. We'll see how that goes. Multiplication table so they can quickly, you know, what's one times one, you line it up and there's one, you know. So, all right, so then each unit has an overview which is really helpful that's a pretty quick concise overview there it is and then you do your flip through and so I'm just going to flip through a little bit and get an idea like the first lesson is one two three four pages so that's definitely a jump from the level two actually wow it's five pages so I can see because again for me my son is going to be doing this as a second grader that I can see that this is going to be a, something we slow down on and that's fine uh, because maybe he'll developmentally be ready to do five pages of math of course a lot of it's like scripted out it's not all just him doing problems so you know it might not be that big of a deal so it'll be interesting to see or maybe we will definitely need to slow down some lessons and break them into due days or cut some problems he doesn't need and I'm definitely okay with that you know I'm teaching the child not the curriculum and doing what the rest for him and helping him to make that progress and growth and to hopefully love learning. All right, here's the unit two overview if you want to pause and look at that. And keep in mind, you can download this entire curriculum for free. So I'm not going to do a complete walkthrough because you could easily go to the Good and the Beautiful website and take your time and look through theirs and download that. Um, I definitely recommend just buying it printed because it's pretty affordable, but you know, you could print it. 
Now, again, I think I won't continue going through the unit overviews. I think I'm gonna look at the back for you. We saw in the beginning the table of contents, and I think it's kind of fun to look at the course assessment because that um, tells you a lot about what they're expected to do at the end. Okay, so here's the end of course assessment. All right, so here's some sample problems of what they're gonna be able to do at the end of this course. Now, if you're a parent who's trying to decide whether to use Good and the Beautiful, I hope this is helpful. I really do like the curriculum. And again, I've been using it since my son was in preschool because we used it for K and now the, we're going up to the third one. Um, and another thing I want to say if you're trying to decide, well, which level do I start at? I know we automatically think, well, my child should be in third grade, so start in third grade. And most often that would probably work. But of course, it what other curriculum you may have used in the past or what experiences they've had might um, put them at a higher or a, you know a lower level, and that's not um, you know a bad thing. It's just doing what is best for the student, and so they do have placement tests on the Good and the Beautiful website, and you can um, you know it's just like a little one-page thing where it has some questions that you can ask your child or have them do, and it tells you whether they would need to you know do that level or the one above or below. So I think that's really helpful if you're questioning that. All right, well, that's our math for the 2023-2024 school year. Again, we will have to finish out our level two. We'll see how far we get in our brief, you know, sessions over the summer. We do take a summer break. Um, we don't come to a 100% stop. We like to, you know, feather in some things so that we don't have that summer slide where they're like, you know, doing absolutely nothing and forgetting everything. Uh, or not everything, but you know, it's good to keep some things fresh. So yeah, keep your watching.